Hello and welcome to another episode of Grange TV. We have with us a very special guest, Mr. Max Payne Griffin. He is a contender for the welterweight title in the UFC and a former Tachi Palace um, welterweight champion. Mr. Max Griffin, thank you for joining us. Yo, yo, how's it going? How's it going? Oh, man, we're good. Everything's going good. Um, how's your training camp going? You got a fight coming up? Yeah, man. I got a, I got a good fight coming up. I have a wonderful training camp. Um, we're getting a lot of good work in. A lot of good work in. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot, you know, um, spending some more time doing some other things and really, really dialing in on this fight, you know, working on things that the guy's going to do, you know, just the guy wants to take me down. So, he's, you know, we've been doing a lot of takedown defense, a lot of grappling stuff. And um, it's working out well, man. We're ready to go when we're ready to beat this guy handily and finish him. What um what's your evolution been like from say fighting in the regional shows moving into now fighting in the UFC and fighting your way through the UFC I suppose man um it, it's it's been such a long way I used to be so 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 one dimensional I think I've been fighting for fourteen years now um, I started martial arts when I was young but I've been fighting since I was twenty one I'm thirty four so that's almost fourteen years. And, you know, I used to be a super striker, knocked everybody out, had zero ground game, you know, and then they're like, hey, this fool's going to knock you out, so you got to take him down. Because then I had to start nullifying that. Everybody wanted to take me down, so I had to um, do a lot of work on the takedowns. And then once they get on the ground, you know, they want to work some stuff. So it just kind of evolved, and I'm fighting these guys, and, you know, kind of the more round, well-rounded you get, the more route, well, you know, well-rounded, you have to force yourself to become. You have to immerse yourself in everything, all the techniques. Um, and now we could do it all. Now we do everything. Now it's um, we know how to fight. Now, now it's just certain positions for certain opponents, and um, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're just doing things that need to be done to um, to beat certain people and every situation and um that's where we're at right now what's uh with with the grappling was it something you didn't like doing or you just never never did it or or like did you just prefer striking overall i prefer i guess i prefer striking i used to fight you know um you know fight in the streets sometimes or whatever parties and stuff and you know when i was a young knucklehead but yeah um if i knocked a lot of people people out then why is the point in going to the ground i was like yeah i don't need to do that stuff and i think i'm fought um jordan williams he just got signed in the ufc um on contender series i fought him like 10 years ago um in reno um i was ultimate i, I had the amateur title the ultimate reno combat title um and i beat the brakes off from striking but he wrestled me he took me down i couldn't get up you know, um, he didn't do, he did zero damage, um, zero, but he had, you know, he had control. He had control of me. And from then I learned like, Hey, I need to, you know, I need to work on some things. So, you know, everything that happens, it's a, you know, it's a, I don't regret anything. It's a lesson. And especially, you know, if you, you have to learn from it. So, you that's how it goes you never ever wrestled. since then i mean i'm working now sorry no. sometimes never you... wrestled yeah i was gonna ask you, you never wrestled in yeah, high school I never, yeah. I never wrestled in high school but last year i was tied with second most takedowns in the ufc with 13 me and curtis blades had this tie for second most takedowns and i didn't wrestle why didn't you wrestle in school i don't know i wanted to play football um you know, so so I did martial arts when I was young. Go, Taz, go. Go. So I did martial arts when I was young, um, you know, from 4 to 13. Got my black belt and stuff. But then by the time I got to high school, I was sick of it. I mean, sick of trainings, sick of all that. Um, so when I got to high school, I didn't want to do anything. You know, I wanted to hang out, um, you know. 
do high school stuff. I tried to play football, but I hurt my knee. Like, I hurt my knee during the summer. And then they wanted me to come out there. I couldn't play all season. And then they wanted me to come out and watch all, all the whole the whole year. <laughs> like, How old were you? And, How old were you? I was high school, so probably a freshman, probably 15, 16, I don't know, 14. I don't know. But they wanted me to just do that. And then I was like, no, nah, whatever. And I didn't play any more sports in high school, um, like on the team or anything. Um, yeah, so it's surprising. I wrestle a lot of guys now, um, a lot of D1 guys, um, all kinds of really high-level guys. And they go, man, what'd you wrestle? <laughs> you know, I don't wrestle, bro. I mean, I wrestle now, but, um, you know, it's some really good coaches, Alex Grinder. Um, you know, he, he – I give a lot of my credit to him, man. Um, Iowa Hawkeye, but yeah, he's yeah. Now, now I love wrestling. I enjoy it. Um, we've been putting in work, you know. What What were you like when you was say if we were at school together when you were in like ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade around there? What were you, what kid were you? I was good, man. I was friends with everybody. I was a cool. Um, I was one of the cool kids. Um, you know, I was a bully, a bully killer. I didn't like the bullies. I was, I, I was like I am now. You know, the people's, the, the people's champ. You know, um, had a lot of friends, but I stuck up for people. You know, um, I beat up a bully at school one time and got in trouble for that. But um, I'm a man of the people. You know, I'm the king of Sacramento, man. I've been doing this for a while. Where did that come from? Because I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you about that. Because I, I, I looked up the thing and they said yeah. You were known as the King of Sacramento. How, how did that come about? Yeah, so, um, so I've, I've lived here. I mean, I was born in Santa Barbara, but I've moved to Sacramento in here four. So I've been here for 30 years. Um, I've always lived here. And um, I've been fighting here. So we had the West Coast Fighting Championship. A lot of good guys came out of that. Um, I was a West Coast champion. 70, I was a welterweight champ there. I was an 85 champ. A lot of guys came out of that. Um, Josh Emmett, um, Andre Feely, a ton of guys. Um, anyway, um, before, um, I was a champion in the area. I was one of the best guys in the region. One of our rivals was Team Alpha Male. And we had a, uh, a few guys there um, that I fought for the title. And they were like, they're like 15 minutes from here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. during the region, we fought them and, working our way up um so i did it i took care of business up here and then i was like hey i need the the it's ufc i need to take over more south i need to take over all the california so i went to tachi palace i got that title and there in that time um this guy david mitchell he's ex ufc guy um black guy he's really good but he was talking all this trash he, i guess he got cut by the ufc came to west coast when i was gone and won like eight straight, came and submitted everybody. Max Griffin, you're scared. Max Griffin, you're scared. You this and you're that and all this. He was a big talker. There's a lot of hype on it. So that ended up being like the king of Sacramento fights. So after like two years, he finally fought. And he like, like he went on eight fight streaks and submitted all these guys. And I was doing my thing. And there was, you know, grapplers versus, you know, me. And uh, all of Sacramento was there. It was insane, insane. A lot of trash talk, a lot of media. Um, and, you know, you talk to UFC and the winner gets to go to the UFC. Either he gets re-signed or I go. And, um, you know, I knocked that full out in under a minute, just pieced him up, um, dropped him three times. And uh, that was the king of Sacramento fight. Um, it was major. It was so major. It was like the, it was the biggest regional show that night in history, uh, like of California. So, and but yeah, what's that like for you? Like, what what were the nerves like having so much on the line? And what was that like for you? Like in, in that regard, you know, um, for me, I'm kind of used to it. We've always it's we're born in this kind of shit, you know. Um, I always have nerves. My my coaches, um, my coach Dave Marinoble, ever since I started my first fight, um, 
He's like, well, who's your best guy? You know, like I never got to fight the guys that were one in six or these these guys that suck. I didn't get to fight those guys ever. My coach would be like, oh, oh, he's not good enough. Who else you got? Who you got any guys undefeated and all that? Um, yeah, my first fight, I fought this guy in Oregon and I drive up to Oregon, which from here is like a 10 hour drive um, in the car in those Toyotas with the seat in the back that's sideways, those small ones. I was sitting in the back of that in the sauna suit for like eight hours. Um, the guy I was fighting was like the pride of Oregon. Um, his name was Jeremiah Hunter. He had two fights. And his in his two fights, he threw one punch in each fight and knocked the guy out. So he came out, first fight, knocked the dude out. One punch. Next fight, overhand right, knocked the dude out. That was the guy I fought for my first fight. You know what I mean? So it was like, oh, you're <laughs> shit. You know, I, I, I didn't get to fight guys that weren't good. So I always, you know, had to be at a high level and went in there. And um, Oregon's a little bit different than California. It's not too mixed. Um, real, uh, real, uh, real white, real, like, uh, real racist. It's like real country. Um, just a different vibe. I was the only black guy there, and there's thousands of people there. Crazy, but they're they're yelling racial slurs in the crowd and saying all this stuff, like but openly not... saying stuff, like openly saying racist yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Kick beat that nigger. Shit like that. For real. Crazy. Yeah, I swear to God, dude. And I freaking knocked that fool out. And yeah, it was like under a minute. Knocked him out. Shut up the crowd. You know what? You know they're just. You know, all pissed off and stuff. His mom tried to say some shit, you know. Um, but I've always fought. I've always fought um, with pressure. Pressure. You know, pressure. Pressure is, you know, most of my fights. I mean, if you look at them, I mean, I went to Oregon to fight in his hometown. I fought Mike Perry in Orlando in his hometown. I fought Tiago Alves in Brazil in his hometown. I fought um, Eric Montano ultimate Mexico, ultimate fighter winner in Mexico in his home country. So like, that's what I do. I fight people where they, you know, it it takes the pressure away when you're fighting them in their home. And it puts a different, it, it, for me, it puts a different attitude on you. Like, you know, it's nice when, you know, your friends are like, yeah, go back, go. And then when you got a whole country that want you to die it puts a different like uh taste in your mouth you know what i mean it kind of puts you in a different mindset or uh, it's no bullshit and um he rides to the occasion does, does the you prefer to play away than to play at home probably probably yeah i mean i like fighting at home i tried to fight in sacramento it didn't work uh, last time, but I mean, I love, like I said, I love to fight home, but when, when you are away, it's a different feeling that I like about your backs against the wall. Um, I like that feeling, man. You know, we've fought across the, the world and it's, there's no, it's a good feeling. We, we, um, my wife and I almost moved to, um, Oregon actually. Finally. Really? We were just talking like, we had an opportunity and we were talking, blah, 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 blah. And then we didn't, we didn't move. And I think like now from what you say, lucky, cause they probably would have put me in a museum. It was Springfield. It was Springfield, Oregon. I mean, not oh, all okay, Oregon. Okay. Okay. So it's not like the city. Not actually. all Oregon. I mean, that's, I've been to Oregon once and that's where I went. And that was my experience. You know what I mean? Ah, okay. Okay. No, no, I was just curious. Cause we, 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 the, we had a, like a job opportunity there before a couple of years ago. And I was thinking, yeah, yeah with what you I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there's other states and or other cities, but Springfield, Oregon, is racist. Like I'll tell you that. I've been there, you know, and it it was <laughs> a little bit different, you know. But, it's a is it a little yeah. town? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. I mean, and what small town? What's your background? Uh, like, what's your what's your background? Like, what's your mom and dad? Uh, my mom's white, so she's, but she's Greek. She's Greek. She's Italian or Sicilian, Polish is my mom. And my dad's black, Nigeria from, uh, I did my 23 and me. That's how I know. Um, but Nigeria, 
But is your dad is your dad uh, from the US, Nigerian? Yeah, or is he... He, yeah, he, yeah. They're both from, from the US. I'm born here. Yeah, the US. Um, yeah, we've been here for a while. Um, like your dad was born yeah. in Australia, in Australia, in the US. Yeah, my dad was born here. Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, his background, yeah. background. He's Nigerian. That's what. Yeah, you yeah. I know. I said I just got my twenty three and me. So yeah, my dad's black and my mom is white. You know. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And and you know, in Springfield, they hadn't, they weren't ready for that yet. They hadn't. Seen <laughs> they that weren't yet. ready for that. No, they were. Um, you know, they're, you know. So it's kind of like a ginger in Brazil. Um, one of my best friends has red. He's a redhead. You know. Yeah. And he, when we were in Brazil, they were looking at him like they've never seen a redhead. I mean, they're walking by his face in the mall, looking at him like this close. Guys walking up, looking. <laughs> and then, like, literally, like, 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 pointing at him and stuff. Like, everybody looked at him. Like, every, he has a red beard. You know, they thought he was Connor, but I was with them in Mexico one time and thought he was Connor McGregor. I'm the one fighting, and they <laughs> gave one up, give me a camera to take a picture of him with my with you know, they think he's Connor, you know. What's what's fight day what's fight day like for you? The fight nerves. Um when 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 is the crescendo of nerves for you? Is it fight day day before? Uh, well, I try to get a good night's sleep night before fight day. I wake up, you know, I wake up smiling. Fight day. This is, what, this is what it's all about. Like, this is this is it. This is what I work for. So I'm happy on fight day. And I try to chill all fight day. Um, I try not to think about the fight, you know. Um, but previously, I used to be pacing all day and uh, getting hyped up. But I try to nap. I try to rest. Um, I listen to reggae music on fight day. Real calming stuff. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to be all hyped up. It's like the calm before the storm, you know? So I to relax, relax. Um, so I really don't have nerves on fight day. I try not to think about the fight, you know? I try not to think about it. But then once we, once it's time to go to the arena... Then it's it's time to go, you know. Once I started getting ready for that, I started getting pretty serious, you know. Um, still enjoying myself though. You can't you can't burn all your nerves. You can't burn all your energy. You'd be surprised. <laughs> You'd be surprised, y'all. <laughs> you don't even realize that your shit's pumping and your nerves are going. I mean, it's your it's your fight or flight response. It's your fight or flight response. And if you don't know how to control it, you could just burn all your juice you know and come out flat but um really once i get my hand wraps i'm calm as shit until i once they once they wrap my hands then it's then it's um pretty much fight time after that wrap my hands fight time and then it's war i'm like a different person i'm not i mean i guess i am me but uh, once i hit that switch um it's a rap. I'm a different, you know, I do this chi thing. Um, I was doing this thing a long time, but I learned it like 12, 11, 12 years ago. Um, I'm really in the energy and all that. That shit's real, bro. And um, I use it and I do this thing where you power up your chi, that someone grabs your arms on each side, you use like breathing exercise. You take these big dragon breaths and they both people pull your arms down. You do it three times. And at the end, when I get up and release, I feel like I'm underwater, like... My eyes squint, I throw out, I do it, and then it's like, I feel like I'm underwater. Like, when I'm moving in the air, like, I feel fucking, what do you call it? I feel the, I feel the energy, man. And when when I'm in that, then it's just, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm super cyan, you know? I'm just charged up, and oh, I love it. And <laughs> have you it. always loved fighting like that? Have you ever always loved fighting? <sighs> yeah i guess you know i mean i was really good at it when i was young and when i did my martial arts i did my i mean i did it every day for, from four to 13 um i was supposed to go to the olympics but it was like four years from then and like i was sick of it and for for what for taekwondo, for taekwondo? Uh, 
I don't know what it's going to be in. Because I did, so my, my black belt was in Bok Fu. Um, it's like a hybrid of um, Kung Fu, Karate, Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, uh, some Judo, a little bit of grappling. Like a hybrid. Because not everything works um, for everything, right? Like, like the, the kicks of Taekwondo are badass. But they, they can't punch for shit. You know what I mean? So you got to, so it's like taking certain things out. I think it's more of the movement of Kung Fu. And, um, you know, so um, I don't know what it was going to be for. I used to spar. I used to spar. Like we went to the worlds and um, like weapons. I used to do the weapons forms and the katas. And like um, our team won, I think in 2002, 2003, we won like the world championship thing. In Vegas, we went out there. Our team won the whole thing. Um, but yeah, they were talking to me about it, but like I said, like, um, that was four years from when I was like burnt out, you know, so probably, probably some striking thing, maybe sport karate or, um, I don't know, you know, I used to spar like, you know, um, that was my thing point karate, but, you know, here we are now. You know, when we're talking about, um, not burning your nerves and not, you know, not, not getting over like over aroused and that before a fight. Um, you know, you, you had a situation, I think when you fought uh, Zalim and there was like the added buildup of the fight, plus the fact that you and he had like altercations. How did, how did you manage your heart rate and to keep yourself at an even keel before the fight? That was a stressful that was a stressful uh, whole week, man. The whole time. His fans, like, just him. Just him and his fans and everything about it was a nightmare, bro. My, I don't know if I did. I tried my best, you know what I mean, to be calm and just to know, to know that we're going to fight. You know, I, I mean, he was trying to fight in the hotel, so, like, like, like I couldn't walk around by myself, like with, you know what I mean? Like I had to fight how like fight you how huh? at the hotel. So one of the times, um, where it was, we were eating breakfast, uh, at their weigh-ins, at their weigh-ins. Um, yeah, yeah. We were recharging up. Yeah. Eating with the family, you know, my girl, my coaches, all a bunch of people. Um, my son even was there and, uh, I seen him, I seen him the whole time in the hotel. didn't say nothing. Right. Really. And then he comes in the, he runs up on me, um, tries to hit this drink out of my hand in the restaurant. Like, he's like, you talk shit, you talk shit, you talk shit. I'm like, Hey, we're fighting. I'm like, I didn't say shit. I was like, we're fighting tomorrow. He's like, we fight right now. I'm like, we're fighting tomorrow. I'm not going to fight you right now. He tried to hit the, the drink out of my hand and the drink like spills on some like lady eating like breakfast with her dad. We're like in some fancy hotel in Atlanta, you know? And, uh, and then it's bless you. Thanks man. And then his coach comes, his coach comes up and you know what? Francis Nangano, Francis Nagano grabbed that fool. Francis was right, was eating at a table right next to him. You know what I mean? So he's, um, he's, he's doing all this stuff. And once they started grabbing him, once his team came back and grabbed him and Francis grabbed him, then he did the whole thing, making the whole scene all long, hitting stuff, knocking stuff around. Like, we're in this little fancy little hotel. Like, what are you doing? Right after that. Um, they grabbed them and then uh, UFC security came, cops came um, and the people were like, oh, oh my God, what's going on? You know? Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to fight that guy tomorrow <laughs> or I'm going to beat the guy up tomorrow. They're like, um, like they didn't know we were going to fight, you know? They, they, don't know, they didn't know anything, but they're like, that guy's such a jerk. I was like, I'm going to beat him up tomorrow. She's like, you are? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's gonna be on TV. Oh, she's like, really? I was like, yeah, I'm the, be, I'm the, I'm the beat the crap out of that guy tomorrow. And they're like new fans, you know. It's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Was it hard yeah, to? A, oh, was it hard to control punk. your emotions in the fight? No, because I had so much for him. 
Um, even that day after that, I mean, Dean, everyone came up saying, oh, we talked to him, you know, he can't do that stuff. We talked to him, you know. I was like, well, what can I do? I mean, if he touches hands on me, like, can I can I knock him out? I mean, how can we fight? Is that, I, I was like, I don't want to get suspended. I want to beat him up tomorrow and get paid. That's what this is about, you know. Um, but after that, we're in the hotel and he sees me uh, when we're getting on the bus for weigh-ins that day. He comes up to the table and like goes like that with like a water bottle, like like flexes on me, like like water gets on me, you know what I mean? Like a few hours later, they grab him again. Like when we got on the bus, like I told him I'm gonna fire on him if he's if he's in my in my little re- area. So yeah, yeah. we were in the rooms at the weigh-ins, at the ceremonials. I had four cops around me, and he was like in some side room. He's a clown, bro. Um, but I think. Yeah, he, he, what, what kept me so calm in that is though, is some people need that to beat you. Some people need, they'll know, they know you're going to beat them. So they, they need to take you out of your game or take you off, take, take you off what, what you're planning to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, people know you're going to whoop their ass. They don't want you to whoop their ass. So they're going to try everything to get in your head to do anything to throw you off. And that's what he was trying to do. Um, yeah, that one is personal, man. And do you, personal. did you feel more nerves, more pressure going into the fight? The fact that it was no, I couldn't wait to punch him in his face. And if you watch that fight, the yeah, first we start like, the yeah. fight, I come up to him right in his face. Yeah. First, uh, I was saying it. I was yeah, saying it. but no time. Just yeah, man. Um, yeah. Did you interact shit. after the fight at all? Was there any interaction no. between you and him after the fight? No, no. Um, I was still waiting for him to run up. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't, um, it was stressful. I've, I've had so many fights. And there had, there's never been like where you got to watch your back, where the guy's team is going to do something or his, you know what I mean? It was really, even after I beat him, you know, he was talking shit and all that, you know? But I know, you know, I know Ali, you know, I'm cool with Ali, but you know, dude, um, I mean, you saw him, he was, he fought a uh, Pereira the other day. He smacked him or whatever during weigh-ins. Yeah. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, and he lost that one too. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But like, he's not, he's not understanding. He got knocked out by Danny Robert, which I loved. Um, but yeah, uh, I usually don't like to see guys I beat lose. But yeah, he yeah, can yeah. Lose, he, he can lose every day of the week, you know. Because I was gonna say, in that fight when you fought him, um, after the fight, it seemed like his coaches and managers were all cool with you. Like they were like, it seemed like. Yeah. They, but but he he continued with it. Yeah, he's like a prince or something. I talked to Cody. I'm friends with. Uh, uh, I think Cody told me. Yeah, I think Cody told me that he's like a prince. What do you mean? He's like a. He's an he's like a prince. He's like royalty in like in Dagestan, in Russia, wherever he's from, Chechnya, Dagestan. He's like royalty. He's like a millionaire, like little rich kid. You know what I mean? Yeah, he comes from like millions of all this money. So he's like a spoiled brat. That that yeah, that's what's wrong with him. He's a spoiled brat that gets whatever he wants, and that's why he doesn't listen. The UFC told him, don't, don't do anything else to Max, and he still does it. Don't do that to him. He still does it. Like, he's either stupid, like, like he doesn't understand, or he just doesn't care. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no consequences. And for them to tell me that he's like a real prince, like, they put all this money into him to be super good. And, um, yeah, he's a little spoiled brat, you know? So... I are, are you um have you got brothers and sisters? Just uh, I was just thinking. Yeah, that. I'm the oldest. Yeah, yeah. And you got I'm younger brothers and sisters? Do they fight? Do they play sport? Um, my brother kind of. I mean, he's had a couple amateur fights. My other brother, not really, not really. He's like a hippie. All oh, right, know? right. Yeah. Did, how did you uh, support yourself when you were fighting in the regional shows? Because I know that's really hard for fighters. Um, what was that like for you? Oh, it's where I was made, man. Um, so I worked full time. 
So I've been fighting for 14 years and I've worked full time the whole time. You still work uh, full time? Not anymore. No, not anymore. Uh, but I did for years, for years. Um, you know, I think I worked at, yeah, I used to do construction. I used to work at CIW, um, corporate, corporate real estate. I used to do a lot of that stuff at Blue Shield, but I worked out in the morning. I, I, I trained in the morning before I trained from like five to seven in the morning, go to work my nine to five. Sometimes I work out on my lunch, depends if I had a fight or not. And then at night, I'd train from five to 10. That was my life for 10 years, straight up. Like every weekend, I'm up at four. I worked so hard, you know. Um, I had to. If, if, if there's no such thing as time, you got to make your own time. You know, I don't have time. I don't have time either, but I made it happen. I got up earlier. And, um, it was tough, you know what I mean? Going to work with like black eyes and belts, you know, in the region, but just working. And even when I was in the UFC, I was still working. I still worked for about a year, year and a half when I was still even in the UFC. Who was the last know, guy that you worked full time and, and for? Uh, Blue Shield of California. Uh, yeah, I was a co uh, facilities coordinator. I was like the landlord of this you know, healthcare company. Basically. Okay. Who, who was the um, last guy that you, that you worked, that you fought? I fought, I fought, um, Elizu Zaleski Dos Santos in Brazil. Yeah, I remember that fight. And we got fight of the night. Um, and I used that money, um, to go full time to pay on my bills for a year and be able to take a leap of faith. And here we are. I'm still here. Um, yeah, I fought Mike Perry. That was my first fight, um, without a job, you know, big, big I mean, difference. Hey, yeah. Oh, dude. It's so, uh, this is the life, you know, it's the life I've always wanted this is the life I have. So it's, it's crazy eh, with the, with the fights. Cause you've had a couple few decisions that were so close that could have gone the other way. And it, you, and then your, your life would be different again you know what i mean but yeah how, how do you feel about that how do you feel like also or, or at least knowing well fuck i was right there with those guys as well you know i get asked this a lot you know because it's true for me it's like you know there, there's been so many fights that you know are very thin like like the only fight i've lost was against colby Cummington. if you ask me that's the only time i've been beaten you know um, other than that, they're all splits. They're all splits, and if they're not a split, should have been a split. And if it's not, it wasn't. A, wasn't mine. It should have been drawn. If it wasn't, you know, uh, Tiago Evans, Henley beat him. Curtis Millinder, I mean, that was razor close, um, dude. Alex Morono, he kicked me in the head. He had twenty five seconds of glory. I whipped the brakes off from the whole, the whole rest of that whole fight. There, there's stuff that is that the Al Oliveira fight. Um, I was just bleeding so much. Blood doesn't look good. So these fights that I lose, um, you know, that I could have won are like crazy to me, you know, but just knowing that, like, like for instance, with Brazil and I, I fought um, Tiago Alves. I outstruck him. Yeah, I, I beat him. Um, you know, for, yeah, so they asked me this. That was big for me to do to be able to beat one of my idols Tiago Alves uh, beat him in his own country I beat him I know I beat him he knows I beat him um, you know everyone his coaches Mike Brown everyone apologized to me after all the UFC all the staff they're all I'm so terrible I'm so sorry I was mad about that but hey do I am I not proud of myself for, for my performance because a judge didn't they wanted him to win. You know what I mean? Like, do I not, am I not proud of myself because a, a, a one judge didn't want me to win or, you know what I mean? Um, I can't let people's actions or opinions change how I feel about myself or the, um, what I have done. You know what I mean? 
Um, yeah, I could easily be top 10 if, if even three of those fights, dude, any, any of them, any of them, bro, like any of those, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to still be here. Um, this is fight number 10 for me, you know, and, um, I'm doing some, some things now. I'm, I'm, I'm actually figuring out that now I understand what's going on. Um, I'm understanding angles and stuff like like those things that that's happened in this last since my last fight um, that have really evolved for me. I don't want to speak too much about them, but I will say that I feel like I didn't understand before. I didn't understand. I didn't understand. Um, can you angles, elaborate on what? You, okay, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Not too much to give anything away, but when well, you I'm say- trying to think how I can talk about it. Um, with angles and like distance and patience and all that side of it. It's like before I was just a freaking battering ram, like a, like a, like a rock'em sock'em straight in. Now I, I understand. I don't need to do that. I don't, I don't need to rush my work like that. You know what I mean? Like I, like I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I've been learning some new things. I've been reading a lot. I've been uh, working with some really good people, and stuff's clicking. Like literally, I I feel like I didn't know what the angle was. Like like now that I really know, and the things that I'm doing now that I that I understand is the difference between like like knowing something and like being able to like teach it to someone else and be able to really understand like a concept more than a move the un- un- understand like why you're doing it and and how it works and how it's effective now i'm like understanding that instead of just do this now i understand why the ins and outs of it and uh i'm ready to um demolish this guy i mean i i fought all i got all these close fights man and without knowing Without, yeah, without knowing what I know, man, I'm telling you, it's like I had an epiphany and I'm like, dude, all this time and I didn't know, I, and now I know, you know, so that's how I feel now. Like, I'll tell you some shit off air about what I've been doing, but um, no, I'm please. so excited, bro. I'm so, I'm so pumped. How do you match up, in your opinion, how do you match up with, and tell us about your opponent. Um... I'm fighting a grappler. I don't even know his name. Rami something. I haven't even said his name. Um, he's a new guy. You know, I heard he was talking crap how he's going to submit me or whatever, whatever. Uh, you know, as far as that, man, um, it's not my first rodeo. I had a lot of experience in the UFC. I fought some of the best guys. Um, he's 8-2, 10, 10 pro fights. Um, this is my 10th UFC fight. So it's different in there, man. It, it, it's it's different being in the UFC and fighting guys in the UFC and, um, you know, doing well against these guys. Talking about how he's going to come submit me. Like, you know, I'm not one of these gumshoes that, you know, he's beating all these guys in the region that who are these guys that he's just submitting in 10 seconds. It's like, who are these clowns, you know? So um, I five, five, six, seven black belts you know he's a i you know i'm excited for this i'm excited like this he's gonna try and strike he comes from fortis they're a good gym i fought alex morono you know um so they think they have the recipe on me which is great you know for for the record engage, you know their recipe was a not engage um but this guy he's gonna want to engage he's gonna try to strike for a little bit um but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to put this guy away. I really want to submit him because he's Mr. Submission. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's nothing new, man. It's nothing new. Of course, we're working take down the fence. I'm wrestling with all Americans. I mean, I'm at Team Alpha Male, you know. We're, you know what? We're wrestling, bro. And I'm defending hundreds of takedowns, like, a day. So it's like, you know, it's... Oh, this new guy is going to come to me. Maybe I'm going to smash this guy. So, yeah, man, that's how I feel about him. You so, for, for the record, his name's Ramiz Brahimaj. 
and you're fighting him November 7th um, at UFC Fight Night 182. That's for anyone that's listening to tune in to that fight to to see that, to see you fight. Um, but uh, I was, so was going to ask you, you know, we're talking about a second ago, you're talking about the judges and all of that. What do you, what do you think it is with the judging? Do you think it's also the fact that you're fighting at, at in your opponent's home and then everything he does, the crowd reacts and has an effect on the judges? Do you think the judges just sometimes aren't that's that good? A, that, that's a facet of it. That's a facet, I believe. Uh, I believe that's part of it. And, 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 and since it has been quiet, I feel like the judging has been better. Oh, really? You feel uh, that? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, before, I mean, I've been in fights where a guy throws a shot, misses. The whole crowd is, oh. judges can't judge shit anyway, okay? I'll say that right now. But when you have guys, fan favorites and stuff like that, that plays, that subconsciously plays plays into these into these judges, man. You got people throwing these crazy punches or you think he lands some the crowd. <sighs> It, it, it helps sway it, it helps sway um, who you think would win it, it's a natural like psychology thing when people are cheering for a certain person it makes you you know think they're winning more um, and then you watch a fight with silence it's different so um, you know the judging's a trip but I think you know I don't know I don't know what they're gonna do. I know. I know my coach had some good ideas about you know judging, you know maybe more judges, five judges, um, or just like a compu score throughout the rounds. You know who's ahead. You have to be punching the round, but that's more for the fighter. Um, I think Bellator, not Bellator, one or something was talking about trying that out. I don't know if they ever did. They did a story a few months ago when they said they're gonna let you know your score going into the next round. Like, hey, it's 10-9. Hey, it's, you know, you're down one. You're up one. How do you feel? Do you know anything about that? About what they're thinking of doing? I heard about that. I heard about they were yeah. going to do that, but then I never followed up and, like, read anything about it. I, I don't know. I don't think the UFC necessarily will because – No, they haven't. Either. Yeah, because the UFC follows a 10-point must system, which is the – you know, it's like a boxing system. So yeah. that, that they're not going to do that. Well – it's still a 10 point must. They were just saying that they'd put their score in then. After yeah. the round, your score is in. It's that's your score. Because people are changing scores. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they're changing scores and uh, I think you know, like 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 you got these fights where it's a five round fight. Uh you could bring one up that happened lately. But you got a guy winning. You think the guy won the first two rounds, and then the last guy finishes strong. You know what fight was that? There was a fight pretty recently. It was a five round fight. I forgot who fought, but I didn't think they won, and the judges did, and or something. You I know what's hard too, man. It's hard when you when you like when you're watching a fight when you're just watching it. You see it one way. If I'm just watching as a fan, if I'm coaching and I'm in someone's corner, I see it completely different. Yeah. And if you try and judge it, fucking hard. That's even different. And if you try and judge from home, it's completely different than if you're judging like next to the cage. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, totally different. And then if you're commentating, it's different as well, you know, because you're all looking for different things. And so mm -hmm. I think that even adds a harder element to the judging. Because, like, it's fucking hard. I would never. Yeah, they're right there. Like, yeah, they're too close. <laughs> yeah, know? but it, but it's a hard job. Like, I wouldn't do that job, fucking ever. But um, it's so much pressure as well. Like, from, cause like, say commentators or whatever, they can they can also sway what people are, are thinking. Like, yeah, you, oh yeah, Joe Rogan. Oh, dude, he talks all the time with these guys. You know, you know, all. All, all the commentators do, you know, they just do. Yeah, and and it affects, you know what I mean? It, 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 it does. Affects. It yeah. does. They hear them say, oh, yeah, he's totally dominating that fight. Totally with that. Oh, I guess he, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess he is. <laughs> I, you, I, I lost a fight, bro. I lost a fight because this judge was eating freaking M&Ms back in the day, bro. Didn't even look at the thing. 
Um, yeah, I lost this fight, bro, against Justin Baseman. He ran the whole time. He ran for five rounds. It's just for, like a week before I went on the Ultimate Fighter, like back in the day. But the whole his he was like this. I was like, yeah. And um, yeah, they had him winning. The whole crowd was heated, bro. It was terrible. Um, but the guy was eating M and M's, not paying attention. Like my coach was like watching them. There's people like recording him. He's sitting there like this fat dude, you know. Sure, I'm bro. Sorry to <laughs> laugh. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing at your hey, your, your your thing. But it is a fucking funny story. I could just picture. Yes, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, dude. Yeah, in this dust bowl, it was under like a rodeo like place. You know what I mean? There's like sand in her eyes and shit. It's like in a bull ring. Um, but yeah, I mean, the home cooking works on the other side too. You know, I've, you know, there's, a, you know, there's a Sacramento card out here. Uh, whatever earlier last last year, uh, yeah, last year, and one of my friends fought. You know, he's from Sac. I didn't think he won. You know what I mean? But like, I know the judges here. I you know oh, he didn't win, right? And he won, you know? And I was like, he didn't win, but they said you won, right? But look, I knew all the judges. I know all the commission in California. Like, we're friends. Because I fought here, right? I fought here for th 13 years, and they're, they're the same people, right? When I was young and fighting in, you know, some air, air, airport air, airplane hangar or, you know, some gym. They were there, so... Hey, what up, Max? It's like, hey, you don't think they're gonna like give me some more points or whatever? It's I just, mean, it's just a natural thing that you do. It's, it's a not, natural human thing. It's yeah, not, you don't mean it. Yeah, it's not. You favor people that you like and know. It's a. I mean, if it's even, dead even. You're gonna pick the guy you like. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's like you go to a job interview and. You know the guy. You don't interview that well, and they go, "Ah, oh, Fab's a good guy. I know him. You get the job." But sometimes you go there, and you're the best guy, and you don't get the job. But yeah. you know what the thing is with that as well. And I think it's it's good that you have like a, a like you know you you know one likes to lose the decisions, but fuck yeah. man, if you won one that you don't deserve to win, you're not giving the check back. You're like fuck that. Yeah. I'll take it. Sorry, buddy. You know so. You know, it, it just stings, bro. It just stings. It stings when you get half your money, man. That for me, that's what more it is. I mean, I, you know, I like I said about the Tiago thing. I know I won. There's these fights where you just learn this one punch or one one second or just these small adjustments. Um, but you just got to keep. You got to make it happen. And what um, would you do differently? Go. What do you think you could have done differently? Like not not back then in like. But like talking in retrospect, when you look back, you go, how do I have attacked like this? Or could I have done that? And like, what, where does that fit in the learning process, so to speak? Not so much like you're living in the past or whatever. Like after the fights, like after the fights, well, I'll watch and see um, certain things. Small shit, bro. When These things that I've, if you watch my fights, like it's small shit. It's small things, small things, man. It's small stuff. It's just minimizing those mistakes, you know. Um, it's like 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 with the Morona thing. Like you kicked me in the head. That's all. It's it. The whole fight. You know, he ran a lot. You know what I mean. I chased him a little much. I should have cut him off more. So there's things that I learned to do. But hey, don't get kicked in the head. You know. <laughs> okay, I got my hand up now. You know. Um, it's small things because as you learn. I mean, talk to people backstage after the fights, you know, I'm talking to him. He's like, yeah, we were hoping you wouldn't take it, you know, try to like take me down and stuff. The third round, I had three takedowns and beat the brace off him after he kicked me in the head. Like, you know, and they were like, yeah, we're hoping you weren't going to, you know, grapple that much. He's a black belt, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so, but the only thing he did was run and kick me in the head. That's it. The whole other time, he was running, getting hit, and getting up. You know what I mean? So, so you 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 beat these guys, right? You beat them, and then you know you beat them, and they 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 know you beat them. You know when they when you win a fight or after a fight, and you're just like this, head down, like hands down. You didn't think you won. Yeah, of like, course not. Yeah, 
you did it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I learned, you know, he said, hey, we didn't want to engage. Okay. So how do you fight, right? How do you fight these guys when they say, hey, we don't want to engage. We don't want to exchange with you. You know, you got to make them exchange. So you learn from, you learn from, you know, you learn from your losses. It's a lesson, but um, yeah, it's small shit. I don't got to reinvent the wheel. Did you used to watch Pride back in the day? Uh, yeah. I mean, not every time, but you know, Did I you, used to watch that. You know how they used to judge on the entirety of the fight as opposed it wasn't yeah. a 10 point must system. Would you prefer yeah. those yeah. rules? Yeah. That's what a, I mean. It's a fight. I think you'd have better outcomes. I think more times than not, you'd probably get the right guy that won. Um, you know. Yeah, because the three round, uh, they need to do something. You know, usually tides turn in the fight. You know, you gotta. Yeah, you got a guy. Yeah, I've been watching. I've been watching a lot of the fights lately, and. Seeing, Like a guy's doing good in the beginning and then he gets worked the second round and then he gets wasted the third round and then he wins the fight because he had a good first round. You know, yeah. it's like, like should he win the fight? I mean, if it goes to the fourth round, he's gonna get finished. He probably can't even answer the bell, but he had a good first round. You know, it's like you, you know I what, think it should be. Right. you know which fight was interesting like that was like uh the Cerrone fight, the last one that he had uh with, oh, with, with Nico. Nico. And um Nico won that round like but then he what lost happened the, in that fight? He lost a point in the first you round. You can't take a point. You look, you can't take a point without taking a point. You can't you if you don't stop the fight and say point, point to each judge, point. You can't just fucking take a point when you want. Because you can't just say, Well, I want, you hey, you want to take a point? Yeah, let's take a point. Okay. Hey, let's take a point. Point, right? They did not take a point by the judges. The, or sorry, the referee did not stop the fight and say there's a point taken. He didn't. He warned them, and then he never stopped the fight and did the point thing. He See, didn't. He didn't do that. No. Because my understanding was that he lost the point. That he lost the point in that first round. And that's how the draw occurred. And that's I didn't didn't. See, I was waiting for that. I bet on that fight, so I was hella watching it. I said they they uh, hold on. Let me let me just look this up while we're here because we I, I need to know now. Because I I in, in that fight I thought it was weird regardless. Because um, it was I don't know. You know what I mean? Like who'd you bet on? Anyways, that's a curious. That I'm. Curious. I bet on Nico, man. Nico to knock him out, man. I, I Nico thought Nico was going to do it too. I thought he'd be able to go to in there and take him in the first round. He was putting it on him, but then he burned all his juice, man. He he like lost all his steam. Um, you know. See, let's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it says he uh, US, UFC Vegas eleven results. Cowboy Cerrone versus Nico Price ends in a majority draw after I poke point deduction. I didn't see in the fight though. We'll have to look back. I watched no, no, it no. too. I, I just remember well, I that, 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 no, that. I was talking to somebody about this like a yeah. couple days ago. I mean, we were talking about how they did not stop the fight and go point, point, point. They took the point without. Like on the judges, and I don't think all the judges even did the point. You know what? I I, I agree with you because when I was watching that though, I I did feel like did they take the point or they didn't take the point? You know what I mean? It wasn't like a yeah, it wasn't clear. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I remember watching it as well, and but I remember them saying they took a point, you know, and then that that's how that draw came about. But but to me, like in in that fight, I I yeah, he did he did burnout so it probably wasn't the best example but i was going to say there are there are examples where you see a guy beat the brakes of someone in the first round maybe they won or not the thing and completely yeah. lose the third and they win the fight you know and you yeah. think like dude it, it, you, you fucking lost you know what i mean like yeah. but but under the 10 point must system it's not even sometimes i think like it's not even bad judging necessarily but the the way that they the 
the format in which they have to judge is already kind of flawed for MMA. I see. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I'm not sticking up for the judges because trust me, I've had friends on the on the bad bad end of the decisions. But but I do think the format is very hard. Like uh, you know, in wrestling, Olympic freestyle wrestling, I can't I, I don't stay up to date with the points yeah. right now. But you could like you could win the first round by a lot, like before. And then when you when the the points would start again fresh, so you might if we did three rounds, you might have beat me six nil in the first round, yeah. And then the second round I beat you one nil, and then in the third round I beat you one nil, and I win, win, and I win. But you fucking mopped me in the yeah, first yeah. round. Do you know what I mean? Like now they've changed it. I don't I don't think it is, but it was a few years ago. It was like that, yeah. And it was like rule, like of course you understand. You're all going there. You're all wrestling under the same rules. But yeah, you could beat me fucking 10 nil. Yeah, yeah. You know? 20 to nil and then yeah. You know, you win one and one. It's like Yeah. So so it's, it's sometimes I think the format makes it real real difficult as well. And and it's some fights are close too, you know, you're watching around and like yeah. fuck. Like it's not some of them are close. Yeah. You watch a fight and two different people think two different people won. I think he won. I'm like, I think he won. It's like, we both saw the same fight. You know, it's it's up to, you know. Um, being, you know. Being from a striker's background, do you lean towards the striking when you, when you see it or now that you wrestle more? No. How, how do you feel? I try to, I you know, I feel like a takedown without doing anything. If someone just takes someone down, you know, and doesn't hold them down and get up or just something. That's not shit, you know, but I think if they take them down and, you know, do some damage, have some control, trying to do something, that's a little bit different. Um, but no, I try to be even, you know, damage, control, um, like, I'm feeling like their energy, like, like watching it, like, you hear them breathe and how they're feeling. I could see their, I could see their emotions in it. Um, I like it. You know, you could see when someone's hurt. Like I could see it earlier now without the sound. And that's why I think it helps with the judges. Like, you know, what do Uriah say? Yeah. Uriah was saying that, uh, these judges don't know shit, right? He's like, it's like they're, they're judging a street fight. They're judging a street fight. You got people that have never fought judging a fight. They're judging a street fight. If you're on top, just throwing shit on them, you know, it can be not landing nothing. They're going to think you, you're you winning. You know, if you're on top of the guy, uh, you you know, they're going to think you're winning. So he said, um, look at it like that. The, the, the guy, uh, the, the judges are like, like judging a street fight because they don't, they don't know. You know, so no. Um, now, just out of curiosity, who do you have um, with Khabib and Gaethje? I got Gaethje. Why and how? I got Gaethje, and here's why. Why and how? Okay, um, Gaethje is a man. Super good wrestler. Um, no one knows because he doesn't wrestle, right? He's world class wrestler. Um, hasn't used any, I don't think he's used any of it at all, like in the UFC, you know, uh, he's a smart fire too. Him and Trevor Whitman, bro. Trevor is the truth is he's a mastermind and they'll know how to beat. they'll know how to beat him. Um, you know, Alaquinta had a good, good thing, but Hey, all, all of these takedowns are in the center of the cage or sorry, on, on, on the cage. He has to put you on the cage and take you down. That's how all his takedowns are. So you can't be there. Like, you have to know this shit. When, you know, when Poirier fought him, like, he was on there. Like, don't. That's where he wants you. Don't don't go where the guy wants you. And I and I not, I don't think I know that um, Gaethje's good enough to come up with, not come up with the game plan, but follow the game plan that's instructed to him, like he's been doing on these last guys, Tony Ferguson, all these guys that are really hard to fight. Tony Ferguson's a tough guy to fight. 
so tough. Just how he moves, that kind of game plan to be able to beat Tony Ferguson like that um, shows me that he can execute a game plan. He stuck to it to a T, and, um, you know, I believe he hits real hard. And I think he's going to – I think he's going to – I think he's going to stay in the middle. I think he's going to make Khabib fight. I think he's going to piece him up. Um, I think he's going to finish him. I think he's going to stuff his takedowns, get him frustrated. He's going to have to shoot from far away. And I think, um, yeah, I think Khabib's going to, um, yeah. Have you, the have you worked out with uh, either one of them or people that have worked out with them or anything like that? No, I talked to Trevor though. I'm on Team Onyx. I get the, the Onyx gear and the gloves. It's the best, the best stuff out, custom molded to your hands and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I chat with those guys here and there. But I'm, um, I know Trevor well, and he is a man. Um, he is yeah. man. He Trevor Whitman's like, that's he's, what, he's dude. That's one like, guy I want to have on the podcast. That's one one person that I'd love he, to have. He, he's like. He's like an alien. Like he's he's really up there with what he knows and and how he articulates. And he's a mad scientist. And um, you know, like I think it was good for Usman to go over there. I think that's gonna be great. And it was great. I mean, we saw it, um when he beat up um who did he beat up Tyron? Who did he beat up? Kobe when he when he Kobe yeah really he fought Kobe and his that was he fought Kobe right. Uh, I don't know if it was Colby. It might have been. But he just went over there, but he did very well, man. And, um, yeah, I was talking to Trevor. I want to head down there, come say what up. Oh, you're going to go train it? Yeah. I was talking to Trevor about it. So probably after this fight, I'll go take a little trip out there, Colorado. That's awesome, man. That's great. That's really good. No, no, awesome. All right. Well, hey, man, you've been really good with your time, man. I really, really appreciate you coming on here. And um, like I said, I hope people tune in and watch your fight. And I, I really wish you the best, man. I hope you get – I hope you don't even have a decision, but I hope if you do have decisions, you get on the better side of them. Thank you, man. Nah, thanks heaps, man. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. No, you're good people, bro. It was easy to talk to you and um, anytime, bro. No worries, mate. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.